According to Sharon Salzberg, resilience is based on compassion for ourselves as well as compassion for others. Good day, everyone. This is the study of Ibushon, Helera, Hetalada, Gudyo, and Ibalubor from BSN3B Group 2B of the University of St. Pasal's College of Nursing, entitled The Resilience and Self-Compassion of Nursing Students with Delayed Clinical Placements. According to the International Council of Nurses Survey, 46% of countries experienced delays or cancellations to nursing students' clinical placements during the pandemic. In this study, delayed clinical placements refer to the disrupted and postponed clinical duties of nursing students in healthcare settings. It opens the inquiry to resilience and self-compassion as protective factors for the student's wellness. Thus, this study investigated the levels of resilience and self-compassion of nursing students and the relationship between these two constructs. The following are the social demographic variables, sex, social economic status, GWA, current residence, and current living arrangement. In our methods for our research design, this study utilized quantitative correlational design to identify the links between the independent variables and the dependent variables of resilience and self-compassion separately. This design helps determine the relationship among the two dependent variables involved in the study and the prevalence of the effects of social demographic differences among the participants on their resilience and self-compassion towards having delayed clinical placements. For our study sample, the study employed the stratified random sampling and simple random sampling. This study involved a sample size of 229 junior and senior nursing students from a local university in Bacolod City, enrolled for the first and second semester of academic year 2022 and 2023. The sample size was computed using Slovin's formula. The total population is 543 nursing students, compromising 272 junior and 271 senior students. For our instrument, this study utilized a standardized questionnaire asking the social demographic information and utilizing the 25-item Connor Davidson Resilience Scale and Self-Compassion Scale. First part of the instrument is the social demographic information. Second is the CIDERIS 25, which assess the resiliency of the nursing students that contains five subscales. And the third part is the self-compassion scale that assess the perceived self-compassion of the students, which contains six subscales. For the results of the study, the following are the social demographic profile of the participants. Sex, general weighted average, socioeconomic status, current residence, and current living arrangement. Most of the participants were female, had a general weighted average of 1.60 to 2.00, were in the middle income status, and lived with their parents at their own residences. In terms of the general weighted average of the previous semester, more than 6 out of 10 had GWAs ranging from 2.00 to 1.60. Most nursing students have very good grades, a concrete evidence that nursing programs strictly monitor their academic performance. Concerning current residents, more than three-quarters lived in permanent residences, and more than 8 out of 10 lived with their parents or guardians. For sex and socioeconomic status, Sex negatively correlated with resilience, thus implying the presence of personal values and interpersonal factors contributing to the disparities in terms of the levels of resilience in different genders. While socioeconomic status positively correlates with resilience, it can be inferred that students with higher income status are more prone to develop stable attitudes towards their profession. In terms of sex, nearly three-quarters were female. Male nurses are still a minority in the nursing profession. Furthermore, the financial burden from clinical placements has arisen after post-surges of COVID-19. Thus, in terms of socioeconomic status, less than a quarter had a family monthly income of between 43,828 to 76,699 pesos, placing most of the students in a middle-class category. Moving on to their level of resilience according to its dimensions. The results indicated that the students had high levels of resilience after being placed in the fourth quartile. These are the most resilient people belonging to the top 25% and above 75% of the population. Quartile division was based on a population in Hong Kong, China. Students scored high levels of resilience in all five dimensions adapted from the original author's manual. Overall mean is 2.967, with standard deviation of 0 0.528. The highest dimension scored is spiritual influences, while the lowest score belong to trusting one's instinct, tolerance of negative effects, and the strengthening effect of stress. 
This study's overall mean score on the self-compassion scale is 3.179, categorizing it as moderate in level. The Common Humanities subscale recorded the highest mean with 3.675, categorizing it as high in level. On the other hand, the lowest mean is recorded in the self-judgment subscale with a mean of 2.638, categorizing it as moderate in level. Lastly, the two constructs have a moderate positive correlation with a Spearman Row score of 0 0.385. Thus, self-compassion is a contributing factor to increasing one's resiliency and the prediction of high resilience scores equates to high self-compassion scores. For the conclusion, the study revealed that nursing students have high levels of resilience and moderate levels of self-compassion. Filipino nursing students were able to transform their perceived hindrances to achieve optimal clinical competence. It was also shown that resilience positively correlated with sex and negatively correlated with socioeconomic status. And lastly, there was a moderate positive correlation between resilience and self-compassion. The conclusions of the study led to a set of recommendations highlighting the researcher-made strategies of caring comrades conquer. For nursing administrators, this will be based on the comrade strategy that highlights creating an open space for student and parent concern, raising understanding of gender biases in the workplace, and implementing timely and structured dissemination of information regarding clinical placements. For nurse educators, this will be based on the caring strategy that aims to demonstrate caring relationships, nurture a culture of positive feedback, and implement a value-based learning environment. For nursing students, this will be based on the conquer strategy that aims to optimize collaboration opportunities, seek peer and teacher support, and encourage peer coaching. For parents, may it supplement their understanding of how their children cope with delayed clinical placements and recognize the responsibility in helping the students develop strength and self-compassion. For future researchers, may they provide timely information on any other untoward phenomena that may affect nursing students' lives and academic performance. The study also recommends adding another factor in exploring constructs that increase resilience and self-compassion, provided that the two only had a moderate positive correlation. In addition, researchers can study these factors on a much larger scale for students. That concludes our study. May you have gained new knowledge because we researchers conduct these inquiries to empower people of the new information we discover. Thank you for listening and God bless.